The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tech Geek webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Finance and Accounting Shared Services Transformation. And our guest speaker today is Varun Ghai. He is Manager Products and Solution at Nugent Software Technologies Limited. Varun has rich experience in business analysis, pre-sales consulting, solution designing and architecture, and process automation. He is an expert in identifying client or business process needs and conceptualizing business solution. He has vast experience in FNA, SSC automation with strong technical knowledge of business process management, virtualization, ERP implementation, SAS, cloud computing, WCM and KM solutions. Varun boasts a pragmatic approach in improvising on solutions and resolving complex business issues. So, without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you, Varun. Thank you, Radna, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining in uh, for today's webinar. So, uh, this finance and accounting transformation through shared services has been a, a very key and hot topic, and uh, I'm sure you all would be aware that India today is the global eye for the financial transformation and outsourcing. So I took it uh, so to explore uh, what people, what kind of challenges people are facing in this particular domain, uh, what are the global trends towards uh, the automation and the transformation of uh, specifically if you talk about the finance and accounting space. So moving to my first slide which talks about the agenda, so I have kept it uh, sweet and short wherein we will be focusing about the SSE landscape. Uh, how people do the process and how these processes function, uh, the solution approach for the same and uh, what Nugent also offer in this particular domain. So within the SSE landscape, uh, we'll be covering the scope of shared services, the challenges and the automation needs. Now, I've collected certain data from many of those global surveys which keep happening and uh, with those CFOs and the CIOs of the world uh, with the top fortune 1500 companies and uh, finance has been the key in terms of the shared services transformation. Uh, if you see in this global survey uh, 92 to 93 percent like if I talk about today and even the future needs, uh, finance has been on the top of the transformation from a shared services standpoint in the global CFO and the CIO based. Next is the HR, uh, information technology, the procurements, and the BPO and all, uh, followed by the others. And within uh, each of these space, if we deep dive, uh, finance and accounting, the key is accounts payable automation, then is the receivables automation, travel and expense management, uh, vendor request management, then there are HR, uh, processes and uh, IT processes, procurement and facility related processes. Now the key challenges which comes uh, when we talk about the FA and shared services uh, automation or and whenever we do such kind of operation, uh, the key challenges comes in around the operation centralization. That is one of the major and has been always talked about in the global seminars and the surveys I have seen change and transition management, compliance management, managing multiple vendors and technologies, um, and moving up to the value chain. Now, this is again a key that a uh, lot of those uh, shared services which are already running, so the finance heads or the CFOs of those organizations have a key now how to move up in the value chain. So, to achieve those goals, and to overcome those challenges, so there was a further deep dive to understand what are the driving forces behind all of these. And the key was the streamlining and optimization of the processes within this. And then addition automation, uh, 
uh, additional process consolidation, implementation and the continuous improvement has been the key uh, towards uh, the enhanced growth of those processes, addition of functions, uh, servicing additional customers and the processes and expansion and the continuous improvement. Moving next, how these processes uh, normally function. So what I could capture from the industry and how various automations which I have done and I have understood a lot of customers in this particular space, what has been the traditional way and how people have been doing and what could be the solution to uh, overcome these challenges. So normally what happens is that these uh, global giants, they have multiple distributed locations, branches, offices and all. Now it is each of these branches, they have got their operators, they have got vendors, who are coming in and there's a lot of document exchange uh, between uh, those offices for various financial transactions. So for example, for accounts payable, which has been the key in, uh, and the most, uh, the top most process within the FNA space. So uh, the vendor comes in, he submits his invoice to every and each of those branch location. At all of these locations, uh, the local approvers, the managers, staff that are out there, and there is manual approval rejections happening uh, between uh, that branch and the vendor and thereafter there are further approvals uh, on the filtered transaction between them. So the challenge comes in, there are manual approvals, there are continuous follow up with the business user, there is no track of the documents or the invoices, uh, there is no user and invoice tag management, uh, no track of delays, rejections to the vendors. And after like they have processed this, what they typically do is they create that case in their ERP and at times uh, some of them even scan and store those documents for future purpose. Now this traditional way happens across all of the locations, geographies, regions, sales offices or operation offices across the globe. So what happens is that with this way of uh, traditional working, there is high processing cost in terms of the number of people and volume. Uh, there is no end-to-end -end track of the transactions, the documents, invoices, there are manual exception management, no systematic load management, delays, uh, processes are not agile, uh, no clear accountability of different stakeholders. So if I consolidate all those requirements from uh, operations, finance and the automation, the challenges could be uh, consolidated to centralization, traceability, uh, accountability, exception management, operations visibility, systematic load management and productivity, uh, SLA performance management, process agility, scalability of operations, uh, document load handling and quality control. So in one of the global survey done by Hacker Group, what we could found, find out was that these are some of the key automation needs which the global shared services and the CFOs are looking forward to overcome those challenges. The number one in, within this, if you see the workflow, which has been also a key driver which was the process optimization and process automation. So workflow kind of an application plays an important role within this. Thereafter, intercompany reconciliation tools, uh, the imaging and scanning, call center tools, the KPIs dashboard, ERP, digitization, automatic machine and payment allocation, self-service portals and all. They together uh, play an important role to meet uh, those automation needs. Normally, which we have, which we have seen like this uh, recon tools are part of the ERP and majorly all those global organizations have a, one of the other ERP like SAP, Oracle, MFG Pro, PeopleSoft and all. And they, they have their well-established intranet and all. So the need comes in from the remaining which are there in the red from a workflow, the self-service portals, are the uh, auto matching and the payment tools, digitization tools, the KPI in the dashboard, uh, the calling tools and the imaging scanning. Now we'll move over that to meet these uh, challenges and all, what could be the key solutions available uh, within this uh, our global base, the customers or the vendors, what they're offering? And for better understanding, what I've done is that I have uh, focused 
right now on the accounts payable automation. Now accounts payable is typically wherein the vendors submit their invoices uh, and the payments are being processed for those vendors at various distributed locations. So what I thought was in today's session I will do a deep dive on this AP solution with the automation needs what people are looking forward as per the global survey which you just saw. So the entire uh, such platform it covers the key is the workflow platform which we even saw that workflow has the highest need. So there is an end to end uh, document capturing, the electronic documents capturing, the processing, integration with those ERPs of the world. In fact a uh, lot of these global giants have multiple ERPs running at different uh, geographies or locations. So that could be in some of the country they are using SAP, in other country they could be using Oracle. There are also cases that uh, multiple uh, servers have been maintained of the same or multiple instances have been maintained of the same ERP at different locations. So this further complexes the process of integration with multiple instances. End-to-end -end approval workflow, processing various types of transactions within AP which could be PO based invoices, non-PO invoices, recurring payments, employee claims and all. Thereafter, the need comes in for the multi-way validation for straight through processing wherein once you are integrated with the ERP, how can automatically this be matched, the data could be matched uh, multi-way through this ERPs, invoice posting, email alerts, escalations, which is again a very important wherein automated way how those escalations could be handled uh, at different levels of the approval cycle. Straight through processing, that's the most emerging need within this workflow process automation that how much of those transactions can be done straight through without any human intervention that you get the document and you process it, you paste, uh, post it in within the ERP and the payment is also released without any human intervention. That's again a, a very hot emerging need within this space. And last but not least is the query desk within the workflow wherein handling the vendor queries is also very important. So there could be external vendors who has a lot of uh, queries, exceptions uh, to be answered. And apart from that, there are internal users uh, who or the departments at various locations who has a lot of queries regarding the documents or approvals or the payment from the central help desk of those teams. And there are certain like auxiliary or add-on uh, requirements within the workflow which uh, start from a vendor portal or the self-service which we even saw in the global survey that how vendors uh, can do a self-service, they can go online and uh, can process or initiate those transactions. Uh, vendor onboarding, so in this uh, global and distributed world and where these global, if you see the top or Fortune 1500 companies doing global sourcing from multiple locations, they look forward how the documents uh, or the vendors uh, could be captured at multiple locations and how they can be onboarded faster onto the platform. Then there is need of travel and expense. Now we all have, uh, especially in the IT and the service industry, we have seen that we have a huge uh, employee force traveling across the globe for various uh, projects and assignments and all. And there are huge travel expenses which need to be claimed, which also is part of an AP stack wherein uh, all those employees have their bills, their hotel bills, their travel bills and all which need to be settled, how that can also be automated over the same platform. Then comes with the intelligent capture engine, the IPS, wherein you one can like extract the data intelligently from those uh, distributed invoices at various geographies with those thousands of vendors submitting their own formats of uh, invoices, how intelligently the system could extract the data from those uh, invoices. Then is the archival. Nevertheless like for the purchase and the requisition people uh, within the department when you start any process you have 
you start with a document of a requisition, you do the processing over the payable cycle, and at the end, you got the invoices to be posted. And in the future, your quality departments, your internal uh, uh, quality checks and all, within those, you need to uh, verify those documents from an audit and compliance standpoint and uh, engage what has been posted within the ERP. So invoice archival for long term is a very important but the challenge comes in that these transactions are document centric and they are voluminous. So over a period there are millions of documents residing within those uh, repositories which needs to be managed and every day when these documents are added there could be huge impact on the ERPs or the automation of the world in terms of the document load on those uh, applications. Next comes to the requisition management and all where end-to-end -end purchase to pay kind of cycle to can be managed on the same platform. And on top of all of these people intend to have end-to-end -end business activity monitoring engine where they can uh, on the real-time basis they can view uh, what transactions are there, their reports, uh, their KPIs, their thresholds and all, how are, are they meeting those uh, internal SLAs or not or those stats. So for that they want an end-to-end -end business activity monitoring engine. So there are a lot of point solutions available out of the box to meet those needs which we just, just discussed. But uh, in today's trend, when we talk about these workflow automation and all, and as every organization on this earth has their own approval cycles, they have their own way of processing those transactions and all. So we always recommend that to use an agile platform like this, what you can see on your screen, wherein uh, you can model out your own approval processes on such kind of a graphical modeling tool. So using this graphical modeling tool, organizations globally can easily chart out their process. Now you would be amazed that uh, there are so many such tools like Visio and all also available where you can design those processes. But the difference comes in that a process design in Visio is good for documenting and collaboration and all. But uh, such process modeling tools which are part of a BPM engine, what benefit you get is that when you design any process over this kind of a platform, the system translates into an end-to-end workflow application running at the back end. So the benefit you get is that whatever you have designed in the back end, it is developing that workflow application where the users can log in, they can do the processing, they can do all those approvals and all basis the need of your organization. So you need not stick or work as per that point solution. The system is agile enough. It can incorporate your needs and your organization challenges, your organization workflows with it. So this could be a typical uh, AP process end to end wherein the invoices initiate through the portal uh, or could initiate through multiple sources of uh, electronic invoices or physical invoices, thereafter uh, extraction of the data from those invoices, verification, multi-way match with the ERPs and uh, processing approvals from the department, posting into SAP or the ERPs and thereafter tracking the payments, the status, the document archive into the DMS repository, end-to-end -end reporting, and on top of that, these anxiety process which we just spoke about in the previous presentation. So, as we said in the next slide, you could see that there are multiple sources of capturing uh, the documents or the data from varied sources. So, as of today, and in this global world, with so much of distributed offices and location, people would like to like start the document scanning if you are receiving a physical document. TNE, &E, the employee claims, the travel expenses and all could be done on the mobile. So there are mobile capturing engines available that uh, while the employee is traveling, he could initiate those uh, bills right from his mobile. There are portal captures or the cell services wherein the vendors can go online, they can initiate their transaction. These are cell service where people can themselves initiate those transactions and even track through those portals. Then there are engines for 
the email captures, the print spools if you are capturing from your ERP, the fax capture, the web scans for a lighter scanning over the browser and the content archive. So if you already have any content archive or folder where you are already storing those documents, it could be bulk captured from there and be onboarded on your system. So the next slide, it talks about the vendor portal wherein you can do your vendor payments, initiation and all. So in such typical solutions, there is a vendor interface, so each vendor has a login. If it's a new vendor, a new vendor will, will can first uh, figure out the, or fill out the entire details, can attach the documents for the vendor onboarding. And as for the compliances and all, the vendors have to provide their TIN numbers, SAN numbers and PANs and their photocopies are the same which can be onboarded on these cell services. Once uh, these IDs are generated, the vendor login, then they can have their end-to-end -end dashboard of their cell service where they can uh, check their POs, they can initiate their invoices, they can track their invoices, they can check their payments, they can query uh, to the business department or their customer, they can search, they have the details and all. And there are announcements related to those vendors regarding their payments, regarding any new update or a new compliance coming in from an industry or there have been changes in the government rules or taxation, those could be easily announced to those vendors. So vendors can view their POs, so this uh, cell services should be integrated with their ERPs of the customer wherein the PO specific to that vendor could be easily published over to that platform and they can see their POs. And if I have to submit that particular invoice against that PO, I can select one of them and I can see the forms and all and I can fill in the data and just that's it as a cell service. So rather I physically going or couriering uh, the invoices to those distributed locations, I can just go online and initiate those transactions. In one of the use case, I, I was consulting for a large organization and they have a lot of tier four kind of vendors. And in that, their particular case, they had the problems that those tier four vendors uh, didn't have any ERP system, they were generating manual bills and all. They were educated enough to work on a computer, but as they could not ex have expenses on an ERP, uh, there a lot of time their voices were not correct, the line items were not correct, and because of that there were a lot of delay. Now after using such cell service portal, what they found was uh, the, the tier 4 or tier 3 kind of vendors who don't have any ERP, actually it's a good uh, case for them, they can go online, they can, they don't have to fill a lot of data because a lot of data could be captured straight away from the purchase order which has been issued to them and they can only fill the incremental data about that particular transaction. So the benefit comes in that the rejections of those vendors was reduced drastically. Earlier they thought that only the top class vendors, uh, the tier 1 global companies would only go online and fill their invoice. But when this uh, implementation went live, it was that their returns were more from the tier 4 vendors using such cell service tools. Thereafter, today, uh, there are provisions available where you can do credit negotiations for advanced payments and all. So for example, for a particular transaction or an invoice, uh, I request for a 15 days uh, advance uh, payment maybe I can offer on the fly a 1.5% discount to my customer as a vendor and uh, get my payment faster. And once I've filled these, all these details, this can generate a performer invoice which the vendor can eventually print and uh, attach his uh, particular invoice along with that and send it to the uh, end customer or he can use it as a base invoice and simply send it. And for global economies where you don't have to submit physical documents, even electronic work, I think attaching the electronic copy out here and that's it. Then you don't have to even send any physical copy to your customer. Thereafter, vendors can see all those transactions which they have posted uh, and there are so many queries they can initiate uh, to their customers about the challenges, what they have, or any payment issues and all. They can have search interfaces, there could be admin interfaces. So the benefit you get is that 
you, you don't get no more vendor calls. You have an end-to-end -end tracking of the invoice. There's an efficient exception and query management, vendor discounting, and your vendor satisfaction. So vendors get auto notifications on email, SMS alerts, and all. So once the vendors are done, so coming back to our AP, so what we propose is within the transformation is that through your shared services, centralize your entire document capturing or mail rooms for your physical documents rather than having it distributed. So at any particular one location where, where you want to make your hub, you have a centralized mail room, your, all the documents or the invoices are coming to this particular mail room and the documents are captured in bulk from this particular location. And then you can use those bulk scanning engines available uh, using which those documents could be captured very high. So normally I've seen uh, even in a remote scenario people not able to scan more than 200, 300 documents in a day by a person but in such kind of productive environment and with such productive tools uh, I've seen people even capturing 4,000 plus pages per day with just two persons. Thereafter, we talked about the employee claims and all the travel expenses. So there are mobile capture imaging available, whereas employees on the fly can uh, put in their payments, uh, the expenses details, and even uh, capture those documents uh, straight away from the camera of their mobile. So within this application, there are mobile imaging engines available. So it is not just capturing a photograph, it is actually like a scanner running on your mobile which even compresses the documents, do a black and white conversions, image enhancement, the entire imaging functions would be applied using such mobile applications. Then we talked about once those documents have been captured, there are verification stages uh, from the extracted data. So the data is intelligently extracted from those vendor invoices into those various templates so these engines are intelligent enough to automatically understand which vendor has given what kind of a template and basis which it identifies where is the PO number, invoice number, invoice details and all automatically from uh, these in, uh, physical or scanned copies. And once we have captured the data, that data when one can room, uh, run enhanced dedupe checks and all basis which uh, this transaction, if they are duplicate transaction, or they are likely duplicate transactions, they could be captured on the system and uh, the finance users or the processing users could be notified that there is another duplicate document. So this helps in your payment leakages a lot, wherein these advanced video checks, uh, which once they capture it, it reduces the leakages within your payment. And we all know that vendors are today so smart that they make smart changes with their, their likely invoices to have double payments coming in, especially in the non-PO kind of invoice case. So such reduce checks helps a lot and I've seen a lot of uh, the organization with the consulting that uh, they have gained a lot after running such checks. So one could find out those dedupes and there could be a duplicate on a click I can see which particular invoice is actually duplicate to that. Then there is automated match in the back end with the ERPs. So what was the PO value, what was the quantity, what was the amount and all and if the system can do an automatic match in the background and with, uh, validate this with the ERP. So a lot of human efforts is reduced out here wherein uh, one does not have to manually go into the ERP and validate those things. The system can do it automatically in the background. Then there are processing queues wherein each agent has his queue, he can open his queue, he can see the transaction. So on the workflow platform, there's all the workflow platform wherein each user based on his profile, his uh, role and all, the work is allocated in his queues. So if I'm a processing agent for high value invoices, when I log in, I see my transactions which are allocated to me, I open up a particular transaction, I see the uh, form on my left, I, the, which is the extracted data uh, where we have reduced uh, the entire data entry out here. So I see the extracted data, I see the scanned invoice on my right and I can do all the processing I want to. Plus if I want to even do certain processing within the ERP, so there are integrations uh, today on demand wherein uh, at the background we can do validations with the ERP or in fact in this particular scene, uh, screenshot what you see is that the ERP, the SAP 
has been also been called within the workflow platform. So it gives you a unified view uh, that you have the extracted data of the invoice, you have the scanned images on the drive, you have your ERP also coming in out here. So that from a productivity standpoint, this kind of unified view, uh, normally what I've seen is has been increasing almost 30 to 35 percent of efficiency gain within the uh, normal business operations. Next, uh, that these workflow platforms, they, they, they do allocation of the transactions based on different rules. So it's rule driven, it could be like location wise, so if a user is of, of that location or an invoice is of that location, then it has to go to X person and if invoice is of this value or it is a PO value or it's more than $100,000, it has to go to three level of approval and all. So rather being human driven, uh, it's more the workflow driven where the workflow allocates the work on the, to all of these uh, users based on the defined workflow needs out here. And uh, last but not the least, we talked about that archival of the document. So once people want, uh, like, so from their ERPs, if they want to view what were the invoices we have approved and processed, so the documents get archived into those DMS repositories and they are automatically linked with the ERP from where they can view those documents straight through without any document load on uh, their core systems. So next, what comes in is what to measure. Again, a very important in all of these automation, every department, every organization would have their needs from a reporting standpoint and all and what they need to measure. So they need like exception reports, delay reports, error reports, process timelines, the turnaround time, the SLA, the transaction output quality, the customer satisfaction, the vendor satisfaction, region-wide spending report, user performance, team performance, and team performance comparison. These are all some of the top reports I've seen, like all of uh, the, organize, the top organization I've seen. Uh, these are some of the reports which most of the organization want, where very important, they want to see what are the common exceptions in their process. So we all say mistakes are actually learning, so exceptions are the same. So people need to find out that what are the common exceptions in my process and how I can further optimize my process so that those exceptions could be reduced. Now for this you might, let's say a particular exa example that the supporting documents are missing. That's one of the exceptions. So this is a very common issue where the vendors would not be giving the supporting documents and all and if you see this particular type of exception coming very often, you could train or you can educate your vendors that there are delays in your own payments because of the documents are not uh, satisfactory or they're not complete and because of which there's a lot of back and forth movement between you and us. So capturing those mistakes or exceptions is very important. The delays in the whole process wherein what are the major touch points where those delays happen, whether it was due to exception processing, whether this is, was due to low user efficiency, whether uh, on a particular day or a end of the month or quarter end of the uh, years and all, uh, there is a huge volume which is not being handled and there are bottlenecks within the process, the process timelines, the end-to-end turnaround times, the SLA report and all. So these all play an important roles to understand more deeply that what are the areas we are gaining and what are the areas which require further optimization and all. And as you could remember that when I was talking about the solution in the first slide, I talked about those graphical modelers. So once you are aware that what all are your common problems, where all you have the bottlenecks, so you can go back to your process modelers and you can further optimize your process based these outputs or the exceptions what you have seen from your system. So there are beautiful dashboards wherein people could see all those reports on a dashboard so today is no more data centric report is more graphical report which people like to view uh, and and this could those could be basis the person needs the role needs the region needs your line of business and all so depending then uh, there are various reports which need to be configured now 
but in the FNA transformation also there is a need that these reports need to be real time. So yes, we would like to see what happened last week. But today what people are interested to know is what's happening right now. So they want to see the current status so the real time reporting plays an important role where you can see what are the average processing time as of today, how many transactions have been processed, uh, initiated today, how many have been missed, how many transactions have not been processed completely, what are the reason why pending reports and all. From a team and uh, organization or group or user point of view, there are needs uh, to compare the efficiencies uh, of uh, different users, the different needs and all, right? And uh, you want to also compare that which user or which team or which group is giving more uh, efficiency in today's, uh, in your processing. Coming to the end of the slide, wherein we'll be talking about uh, the offerings from the Nugent standpoint. So to meet all those solutions and the challenges which we have just discussed, so Nugent as an organization, we are a software product company and we have our own product, we have our own BPM, ECM platform and all. So what we discussed in the whole slide, we talked about there's a immense and important need of a BPM or a workflow based platform which is agile which has got those graphical modeling platforms which can be used to design those processes and all. Uh, there is a document management system need for handling the document load and also for the long term archival of those documents on the system. We talked about the self service portals uh, wherein uh, the vendors can go online, they can initiate their transactions by themselves. We talked about the imaging needs where the documents could be captured through distributed locations in bulk and could be processed. We talked about the intelligent data extraction engine for intelligently understanding the different templates of the vendors and automatically extracting the data from those. <laughs> we also talked about the mobility platform wherein employees on the fly can capture those documents for their expenses and all and they could also be initiated on the real time basis within the system. So uh, Nugen as a company for the workflow, uh, the product is called OmniFlow from Nugen side, our DMS is OmniDocs, <coughs> the self service portal is in Wise, uh, we have the bulk scanning engine called OmniScan, we have got extraction engine called ITS and the mobility engine called Zapin. <coughs> so coming back to the same old global survey and where it talks about the global transformation need from an automation standpoint for shared services, we saw those red ones are the key which are driving today's needs. And out of this, if I see now the blue ones are the ones which could be offered by Nugen, which eventually is uh, the 80% of the entire need for the transformation of such platform. These are our some of the customers globally in India. They've got huge financial automation shared services uh, running across multiple locations, integration with multiple ERPs and all, uh, running on this kind of agile platform and automating and meeting their business challenges. <coughs> some of the few other global giants uh, running on this platform. So thank you and uh, now we are open for the Q&A. Thanks for the insightful presentation, Varun. Let's quickly take up the questions. I request you to read out the questions and their answers so that all our users may listen to your insights. Sure. So I can see a couple of questions out here wherein there has been question about uh, what all modules does ERP include. So any ERP uh, would have certain basic modules like the financial module what uh, in the standard terms is also called FICO with finance and accounting purpose and the cost accounting happen. Then there is HR module, there is material management module, there is a procurement module, uh, there is a 
QC module, there is a payroll and all. So these are, there are many modules where in which a ERP particularly has. Then there is another question which talks about the template AP process. Now, this is an interesting question because, see, uh, the approach has been that rather than a point solution, we automate such needs on an agile BPM based platform. Now what people does is that a lot of these BPM vendors, they got on their agile platform, they got some template process based on the best practices available from the industry. So using those best practice uh, template AP processes, people uh, need not start everything from scratch. They can use those best practices and automate their needs beyond that. So <clears throat> I think we have only two questions for today. Yeah, let's just give the audience a little time if they want to post their questions. I request uh, all the attendees to post their questions now. In the meantime, Varun, if you would like to give any insight to the audience who are present, you are free to do. The insight here is like uh, if, uh, if you are offering any such solutions and all, or if you are facing any such challenges for similar transformation needs that we discussed today, and if you are planning uh, a career in this particular domain, I can tell you that India has been uh, from quite some time, especially the North India part, the Delhi India part, has been the key uh, eye for uh, such initiatives where people are forming their global shared services out of this particular location. So there's a huge potential uh, because there's a huge uh, benefits coming out of it. We all know these uh, Nugent has been <coughs> Uh, doing uh, New Zealand and the India is like has been doing a lot of outsourcing services and all and majorly it has been the cost arbitrage but uh, as the, the increasing costs and increasing salaries today so all the organization wants to extend the values they want to climb up the value chain so no more the BPOs of the world it's more from the transformations happening within those organizations and the various uh, outsource shared services which they are forming so this is a very important need as of today if you see the today's world. <coughs> so there is another question which comes in that at what extent the SAP ERP uh, can be customized. See any software, all those applications or the ERPs of the world are available and for sure they, they are software so they can be customized and they can be customized to any level you want. But ideally it is not done by global organizations and all because they've got uh, geographical needs, they have got distributed needs and they, they cannot do customization to meet a particular department and all. So they maintain the unified ERP which, which, which serves the entire globe plus the cost of maintaining the customized ERPs of the world is very expensive. So here when I say the cost, it's not that uh, the initial cost of making those changes, it is even the long term wherein that tomorrow you want to upgrade your ERP and if you have a huge base of customization then you will find a lot of challenges in upgrading. So that's why people don't uh, normally uh, make a lot of changes. So what they do is they layer out those workflow needs outside the ERP on the platform which uh, I, I showed, showcased to you today. <coughs> So there's another uh, question which comes is that how Nugent OmniFlow is different from any typical document management system available uh, in the market. See, as I said, uh, the difference actually is in the question itself. OmniFlow here we are talking is a workflow atom, uh, workflow product and document management is more for the archival of those documents. But if, if we say that you want to compare what Nugent is offering or what others are offering, so what I could see from the other world, there are a lot of uh, small products available in the market which from a document management standpoint, what I have seen is that on long terms and, and when the volume of the documents are very high, they are not able to stand up or meet those needs. 
So there are a lot of uh, maintenance and the performance issues on such platform. And uh, there are global products available uh, uh, in the same space which are equally competent to what Nugen offer. We have another question which talks about uh, which is the best ERP. Okay, so the best ERP is actually the ERP which fits in your domain and your industry needs or your organization would be the best. For me actually there is no one is best uh, as such. The best one is which, uh, whichever meets your need. So each of those products available in the market are uh, niche and uh, have uh, huge advantages in specific industry or size of your organization or the geography you are living in. So if you are an entry level organization and if you want to implement the number one ERP of the world then for sure you will not be able to maintain that. It will be like a white elephant for you and even the vice versa. So the best ERP again is based on the need. You are powered to digest that particular product and maintain that particular product. You have covered all the questions, Varun. So if you would like to sum up the session for today, uh, in the meantime, uh, we would try to take as many questions as we could. I think we have just received another question. Can you, uh, did you receive it? From, it's from Anisha. Correct. So this says, what if all my requirement doesn't fit in the standard ERP where my company size is very large? <coughs> okay. So again, yeah, so this is an interesting question that for sure like there would be a lot of needs for a large organization uh, which for which let's say your requirements are not fitting in. So today's trend, I have been part of some of the global uh, similar sessions with the leading analyst and there was a huge debate on a similar topic we were talking about. So if I see, tell you the trend which the global CIOs as of today are following is that they are focusing on minimal customization. They are layering out their process needs on a BPM platform like the one I showed you. Then apart from that, there are industry specific uh, certain point solutions also available. So if I talk about supply chain management or, uh, or some receivables or cash management and all, there are very specific and uh, uh, good products as a point solution available which those ERPs of the world won't offer. So what I would recommend you is that see the ERP from a basic ERP standpoint whatever fits in and for your global needs see what all add-on products are available out of the box in the market and for your workflow needs how BPM can uh, further benefit you out. The benefit you will get with all this is number one you get the best of the world for your different needs in different geographies or different uh, departments or whatever you want. Plus, you reduce your dependency on a single product. Today, I personally know a lot of large organizations who over a period have increased a lot of their dependency on a single or maximum two products. And today, they are suffering a lot because of that. They are like in a cash 22 situation. They cannot go here or there. So what people I have seen today has made their roadmap to reduce the dependency on the sing single product, use multiple pr products and make a bigger ecosystem to meet your global needs. Hope uh, this answers your question. Okay, it seems the audience have asked their question and Anisha has another um, question to ask from you. Varun, did you get it? So there is a question that all, all, are all these different products integrable? Yeah, so if I talk about uh, that uh, those add-ons or these add-on products and all, 
are integratable. So <clears throat> then you have to see like uh, what level or the kind of mature product you are looking forward. But yes, uh, the products who are global standards and all are eventually uh, are easily integrated uh, with those ERPs of the world. And uh, if I talk about the BPM, actually BPM was meant for integration only, so that if you even have multiple products running in your organization, your BPM can like can be like a umbrella process hooked on to all of these different products and unifying your requirement on this processing layer. So what people in today's uh, service oriented architecture world, what people like to achieve is that use the best of the breeds as a product platforms, make a bigger ecosystem, deploy a BPM on top of that, integrate the BPM with each of these products, right, and run this processing layer on top. So if you see that in old applications, when we used to develop 20 years back, the application and the database, everything used to be one thing. Then we layered out the database and we layered out the application. Then the world came where the UI was also layered out of the application, then the application logic, the database, and the user interface. So similarly, if you see logically, what people are doing is, they are layering out the process layer from the application world. They are using multiple products downstream, hooked on to this processing layer, and meeting the entire global organization needs. So yes, uh, the standard products, the good industry products are easy, easily can be integrated uh, with those ERPs. You have answered Anisha's questions and she has sent a thanks for you uh, for answering her all queries. And I think we are all out of questions now. You have uh, taken all of them. So if you would like to sum up the session for today, you can do it now, Varun. Sure, thank you. So in the session today, we, we started uh, with one of the global surveys uh, done by the leading analyst of the world uh, and uh, the trends which is there in the CFOs and the CIOs mind when we talk about the automation and the transformation of the the financial and the shared services. So we saw that uh, the financial uh, shared services has been the key within those outsourcing or uh, transformation needs. Then within the FNA we saw there were processes like accounts payable, accounts receivable, the vendor management, the query management and all, uh, the freight management kind of process which are again very important when we talk about the financial accounting transformation. <coughs> Further moving down, we, we, we understood we, what are the key challenging drivers or the forces engaged those where we saw that the process automation, the process standardization and continuous improvement of the process has been the key uh, in this particular domain. And then we saw what are the key automation needs people think uh, which, which would fulfill those dreams, which could overcome those challenges and where we saw that workflow was the key one because we have been talking a lot about the process automation. So workflow was the key automation need. Then the imaging and document management was another. Self-service portals was another. Uh, and the reconciliations in the ERPs for the rest. Further, we talked about, we saw a use case of an accounts payable automation where how traditionally people have been working in silos at different locations handling those document workflows, approvals, and processing at multiple locations, and facing all those challenges of no track of transactions, the delays, exceptions, the documents are lost. So, so, so this has been the challenge at those multiple locations. And how people, if they want to centralize, then what are the challenges when they, when they even go centralize? So there were challenges around, the, again, the workflows, the centralizations, tracking those invoices, and all. So then we, we touch based upon the kind of tools and the products available in the market which, which could enable your dreams to meet those challenges. We talked about there are point solutions and we talked about why a BPM based workflows could better help you meet those things in this agile world where people look for the continuous improvement and not only one AP process, people would like to uh, transform multiple processes so 
why not a platform where you can design multiple processes and, and automate them on a single platform rather than buying multiple products of those processes. So we, we saw within that uh, there is mobile captures engines, there are bulk scanning engines, there are extraction engines from those invoices, there have been uh, auto validations and integrations tools with those ERPs so that we can reduce the human dependency on validation of those data from the <coughs> ERPs of the world. And then uh, once you got automated data, the clear transactions could be silently posted straight through without any human intervention. The transaction with problems or exceptions or duplic duplicities and all could be thrown as an exception to the business users or the finance team for their manual checks and validations on those particular transactions. And thereafter, <coughs> we talked about the reporting needs. Uh, again, those reports which I showed you are the top 15 reports which globally people would like to see uh, and, uh, and be part of their automation needs. And then at the last, we talked about how Nugen as a product company uh, automates and offer these particular needs and the automation need for the transformation we talked about in the whole presentation. So I would like to thank you all uh, for your time today uh, for this particular webinar. Thank you and have a good day. And I'm really thankful to our guest speaker today for conducting this wonderful webinar. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all our participants for their support in making this webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on techgig.com uh, tech by tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Varun, for all your time. Thank you, and have a good day to you, too. Thank you. Same to you.